Hey developers, so last September I released this book, Vue.js in action. And at the same time, I put up a GitHub repository with all the code from the book. So today I'm gonna do something different. Uh, I've actually noticed a few issues that have popped up in the last few months. I haven't gone through them. So I'm gonna walk through with you how I see these issues. I'm gonna test the code to see if I actually do truly have a bug in some of the examples in my code. So this is gonna be a learning experience for me and uh, I'd love to share it with you guys. So make sure you watch all the way to the end and I really appreciate it. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack developer. I'm also the author of this book, Vue.js in Action, which I highly recommend. I'll put a link in the description below. You guys can pick it up. It's, uh, it's, I've really enjoyed it. It has a lot of great examples, but there could be a few problems, a few bugs, but I'm going to find out today if I really have some. So let's, let's begin here. Okay. So here is the GitHub repository that I'm using to keep track of all the bugs and all the code from the book. So by the way, this is completely open source. Anybody can take a look at it and uh, it has all 12 chapters. Now, first thing you probably notice is we found potential security vulnerabilities in your dependencies. And we'll, I'll talk about this in a little bit later, but this is just, uh, so you can see here, the package lock has this JS YAML. So in some of the chapters, uh, there is some old stuff. When, when I create these app, I'm using the Vue CLI and it includes a ton of different packages. And so something that, that GitHub has been doing lately is if you upload some code and it finds a like an old vulnerability in some old code that you've uploaded from some package that you no longer use, then it'll show up on a list here and then you'll have to uh, fix it with using NPM audit. It's not that big of a deal since this is just test code, but that's the first thing I need to fix just to kind of get these this warning out of the way. The other thing I need to do is I do have four issues that have been opened up and I closed one of them. So let's just take a look at these to see if I can recreate them. So first, uh, the first one is the template compiler is not available. So let's take a look at this issue. I'm gonna kind of do this live here while you guys watch. I'm not gonna really edit this video that much. So it says, hi, Eric, I have a problem in chapter seven. Uh, I've completed all the changes, but when I run the server with NPM run server, I have UCLI, UCLI three, I get a warning. You're using a runtime only build of view where the template compiler is not available. Either pre-compile the templates into render functions or use the compiler include build. So that kind of sounds to me like you didn't create the app first using Vue CLI 3. What you should do, if you're following the examples in the book, the best bet is to uh, create the whole app first and then start adding in kind of feature by feature as you go through the book or the chapter. If you don't do that, then I would just go to the GitHub and download the code, the completed code, and just follow the book through that. So that's kind of feels to me like something is wrong with his build. So I'll show you what, what I have here. So I opened up the repository here. This is all the chapters. I have uh, chapter one through 12 here. This is all the code from the repository we just saw. And I've been just for the sake of time, I went ahead and did an NPM install. So if we go to chapter seven, if I can change directory, chapter seven, and then I go into the pet store app, and I'm assuming this is the app that he's talking about, and I already did the NPM install. So if I do NPM run start, what this will do is it'll go ahead and start the server for, for me, and it'll basically build this whole pet store. So here it is. So I am not seeing any errors running the code from, from the GitHub repository. You know, everything seems to work here. By the way, I mean, the node version inside here is 2.4.2 inside this package JSON. Let's see here, right here. This is 2.42. He says he is running 3.4.0. So I'm not sure if I don't have that code in here. So maybe he kind of started it from scratch with a brand new project and then just copy and paste this on the code in. I'm the only thing I can think of since it seems to work fine on my machine, at least with 2.4.2 .2, that's in the, the GitHub repo. I would say he needs to go in and uh, maybe he could share that with me. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell him to share it with me. Uh, checked. So I'm going to write in check the code 
in the repo for chapter seven. It worked fine. I, I have not updated the view code. So I, by the way, I am using view 2.4.2, but I believe, let me look at the pack here. So I don't know. So with view CLI, um, I am running locally here view dash dash version three. I'm running um, the view CLI 3.4.0 and then I'm running view 2.4.2. So there is a slightly new version of view. I am running the latest version of view CLI. Um, of course, view CLI has changed a lot probably since the last time this app was ran, but I worked fine. I have not updated the view version or tried to create a new app using the new view CLI. Um, so I'm not sure what the problem is. Could you please share your GitHub uh, repo with this code so I can test? So I think that's the best thing I can do right now. I don't think it's worth going back and and recreating all these all these uh, every single chapter all all the code with with the latest version of Vue and the latest version of Vue CLI. I think that's just gonna take a ton of time and I don't think it's gonna be that much worth it because this code here will work fine on the latest version of Vue, I'm certain of it. And uh, there hasn't been that many changes between this code and the latest version. So I think I'm pretty fine here. Um, I'm, let's go on to the next issue and see what it is. So this is weird, so it looks like all it is is one comment with a arrow that says JPEG instead of ping here. So there's product tile to uppercase, product substring, product price, and then image replace ping to JPEG. So I don't even know, like I'm look, if I look through the code, image replace, like there's no code where I do that anywhere in this code base. So we do have this product full size, but it is a ping, it's not a JPEG. Like the actual file is a is a ping file, and that's where it is everywhere in the data. Um, we can verify that. So if we go here, chapter two, assets, images, it's a PNG file, it's not a JPEG file. So I really don't know, oops, let me go back to my code here, issues, so I really don't know what this is about, so I'm just gonna comment um, product. I double checked the product full size dot ping file is a PNG, not a JPEG. Is this, um, please reopen, reopen another issue with more information. So I'm just gonna close and comment this because I, I think that's not really correct. So here's another one, shake animation not working. So was unable to create the shake animation and the inventory message class spun in chapter eight without adding display inline block CSS. So I did, so I have chapter seven here, but if I go into chapter eight, I'm gonna do the same thing. I already did an NPM install on the code and I'm gonna to go to the pet store. I'm gonna do npm run start. Oops, you know what, I'm still in chapter seven. Let me go to chapter eight. I think I fat fingered that. Chapter zero eight, there we go. Pet store, I'm gonna npm run start. Okay, so I'm looking at the code here. I see transition name bounce mode out in. And here's the end of the transition. Um, so it it's definitely on this one right here. It has, uh, when it hits all out, it's moving this kind of bouncing and out in. And that is a part of the animation library with inside Vue.js. And you can see here I have the bounce interactive where I'm doing the shake with the Bezier translation. Um, 
and it's doing the red, like the keyframes for the shake. So that seems to be working, and it's supposed to only do it on the all out. So let's refresh it. We get two. So yeah, I mean, it seems to be working when it transitions, because I'm actually, it only does it on transition. So when this transition goes in, it turns red and then shakes a little bit. So that, that seems to be working. I didn't have to add the inline block CSS on the inventory message. And that's this one right here. So that that is working fine with for me, um, and it only it's only supposed to shake on the all out. So I'm just gonna say, unless he thinks that maybe these other times where it's changing from the product where it's changing to this, but um, no, it really only should be ch shaking on the all out, as far as I can tell, um, just the way I I did it. So I'm going to just respond to him and say, I tested the code in chapter eight. It's supposed to shake on the all out when the amount uh, is zero. Um, it seemed to be doing that with the code in GitHub in this repo. Can you share your, can you provide a little more information? Information or your GitHub repo? Okay, so that that's once again, I uh, can't really reproduce it, so I'm just gonna ask for more information. And the last one is this missing body tag. In, it says, seems that in the file index.html and folder chapter two is missing the opening of the body tag. So I'm gonna to go to chapter two, close this, and I'm gonna look at the index.html. And I have this main, yeah, so I have this header, head right here. I have the div for ID app, but he is correct. I do not have any body tags inside here, which is not correct. So it should be, I should put like a body tag here and then move everything inside this div tag, which uh, should go all the way down here, inside the body. So that would make more sense. And just to make sure it still works, I'm going to open that off in a different screen here. Okay, cool, so here it is. If we look at, we'll inspect it. Now we have a body, which that seems the right thing to do because if we don't have a body, then that's not right. So now we have our body tag and it looks okay. So that was a quick fix. Um, I'm going to, so since we fixed that, I'll, I'll make sure I put a push up a pull request regarding this and we'll get that uh, pushed up to the repo. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys is just real quickly how we can fix some of those uh, problems with the security. So if we go back here, uh, thanks for the heads up. I'm pushing a PR, pushing up a fix for that now. Um, sorry for being so late. <laughs> okay, sweet. So I'll, I'll push up a fix for that. But the other thing is the security alerts. So we could take a look. So here's in some in chapter seven. So if I'll go to chapter seven and I'll go to the pet store and I can run NPM, uh, let's see here, if you guys see it, NPM audit. And what that'll do is it'll look for problems with some of our vulnerabilities. So it says there's 590 vulnerabilities. You can run NPM audit fix. So I'm gonna do NPM audit fix on it. And that should fix it for this one. So. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for all the different examples that have these little audit problems in it. And then I'm going to just push up all the fixes and also that uh, fix for the body and that will get merged into my repo. So I think that's it for today. I uh, hope you found this interesting. This is kind of the way I, I've, I'm working, trying to fix these little issues in the repo. And you know, if you wanna support the channel, make sure to pick up the book 
and uh, or just make sure there's a link in the description below. You can get the first chapter for free. So at least check it out. See maybe if you guys like it. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.